This is the studio of Jane De Decker, sculptor. We are in Loveland, Colorado, and I have never been in a sculpting studio like this, an actual working sculpting studio. I think I took a trip to Augusta St. Gaudin's old studios. He's, of course, long since deceased in uh, New Hampshire, I believe it was, New Hampshire or Vermont. But this is the studio of an actual working, living sculptor, Jane De Decker. And what we are seeing here, these giant figures, much larger than life size, are going to be um, cast in bronze. They are not finished yet. There is more detail to be put in on these figures. That one in the middle is Harriet Tubman. This is uh, a Native American uh, woman. I will put all the names into the uh, description below, but there's going to be detailed beadwork and detail put on her clothes uh, and the uh, wampum belt there subsequent to my visit. These four figures are going to go uh, in one installation at the Women's Suffrage Museum in Seneca Falls, New York. Uh, Jane received the commission for this project in uh, early 2020, mid-2020, and has been working on it since. These are lesser known figures of the suffragist movement. That is Sojourner Truth on the right. But we are familiar with the white female suffragists and Mary B. Anthony and that sort of thing, but these are suffragists who are Native American, black, the woman there in the middle, uh, Quaker. So these are the untold stories of the suffragists. And just look at the incredible lifelike detail here. A young Harriet Tubman. just phenomenal. And each of these sculptures is going to have a quote from the women uh, around the base of it. So we can come here and read Harriet Tubman's quote. I had reasoned this out of my mind. There was one of two things I had the right to. Liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other. Now, the Native American woman, here's her name, Laura Cornelius Kellogg. And in her tribe, her nation, the women had the power. They chose the leadership. One of the great quotes I was given by a, a consultant on this project, a Native consultant in their tribe, they were not feminists, they were the law. How about that? So this quote here from Laura Cornelius Kellogg, and it is a cause of astonishment to us that you white women are only now in this 20th century learning what has been the Indian woman's privilege as far back as history traces. And that privilege is leadership, that privilege is a self-determination, the right to vote. This sculpture is uh, coinciding with the passage of, I believe it was the 17th Amendment, uh, the 100, 100th anniversary of which was celebrated in 2020, giving women uh, the right to vote. Another project Jane is working on is for the National Mall in Washington, D.C. And here is some of the early Oh, I guess you'd call the, not renderings, just ideas. The, the project has not been commissioned yet. She's one of the finalists, and she's just kind of putting some ideas together here. You can see the different scale that she works at to get eventually to these enormous, um, much larger than life-size Sculptures. Again, here's an example of what the um, 
National Mall monument would eventually look like. And again, it is about the struggle of women uh, over decades to acquire the right to vote. But her studio is spectacular. Obviously, we've got a, a oil on canvas painting there, all kinds of little uh, details and tools and um, little mannequins and um, studies everywhere uh, you look in here. It's a uh, fantastically detailed with so many works of art. We've got all these uh, busts over here. She's also working on uh, a project for the state of Arkansas to replace one of their sculptures in the U.S. Capitol building. Uh, every state was allowed to select two people that would represent its state in Statuary Hall at the United States Capitol. Many of the southern states chose uh, slave owners, Confederate generals, uh, white supremacists, and many of those figures slowly but surely are being taken out. Florida's one of them where I live, General Kirby Smith, uh, Confederate generals being replaced by Mary McLeod Bethune, the founder of Bethune-Cookman College as we continue to go through <laughs> this uh, in amazing, stunning gallery or uh, studio here. There's another, I believe, Sojourner Truth bust. This uh, wonderful library back here, all these small models and um, mannequins and, and early uh, attempts. And then we'll finally come back to the one that she's doing for Arkansas, which is a woman who was involved in the uh, Little Rock school integration. And we see a, a smaller size here. Uh, I apologize, I've forgotten the name again. I'll put that in the notes below. This is my first day here in the studio and I've been hit with a lot of information and unfortunately I've forgotten most of it, but I will be sharing these uh, on my social media and uh, at cgreatart.com and forbes.com. And this is a project when it gets completed and installed uh, in September of 2021 in Seneca Falls, New York, that you are going to want to be sure to see and then recall this video and say you saw it in the early, early stages. What a treat. Thanks to Jane DeDecker for opening her uh, amazing studio with us today, uh, an experience and a memory I will not ever forget.